This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. We got to stop talking to God about the problem and start talking to the problem about what God has already provided the, and, the, and the solution for the problem. We got to start talking to the problem. Corona, in the name of Jesus, that's the problem. You stop right now. I bind you right now. I bind that spirit that's behind you right now. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's when things will start happening. Get your daily dose of grace on the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. With the Changing Your World podcast, you have encouraging and life-changing wisdom at your fingertips 24-7. Gain a revelation of the fullness of God's grace from Creflo Dollar's powerful sermons. Tune in whenever you need to be edified, no matter where you are. Subscribe to Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that means to know your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. If you have your Bibles this morning, go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Now, I want to start off with this. Some of you are very familiar with this as we taught on authority in times past. When a room in your home goes dark, you don't call the electric company and ask them to, to come and turn the lights off. Uh, you, you turn them off yourself uh, or you turn them on yourself. If your room goes dark and because you knock the switch off, you, you get up, turn the switch on. The electric company is responsible for supplying you with the power. If, if you don't believe me, turn the, uh, uh, don't pay your bill, let them turn your power off and you can hit the switch all day long and you won't get any power. The electric company is responsible for supplying the power but it's up to you to turn the switch on. It's up to you to turn the switch. The electric company, Georgia Power, supplies the power, but we had to come and turn the switch on. We have power in the dome this morning, but somebody had to come and turn the switch on. Now, that's so important. Just think about that. So, I believe that the number one reason for unanswered prayer is that people are asking God to do something that he has given us the power and the authority to do for ourselves. The number one reason for unanswered prayer is that we continue to ask God for the power and the authority uh, to do something when he's already given it to us for us to do it ourselves. So asking God to do things that he told us to do isn't going to bring answered prayer to our, to, our, to our prayers. We're asking him to do something that he told us to do. Now, you remember me saying this, God will never answer a prayer uh, where you ask him to do something that he's already done. But also, God will never answer a prayer to do something that he told you to do. And so you can pray about all of the trouble in the world right now, and you wonder, well, it doesn't seem like God's answering my prayer. Well, he didn't tell you to pray about certain things, certain things he gave you the authority to do. So we're trying to get God to do something that he told us to do. So asking God to do things he told us to do isn't going to bring answers to our prayers. Now, we really we don't really understand the authority that God has given us as believers. The average Christian approaches God as if they have no power, as if they have no authority. And that, that's got to change. That's got to change. There are certain things that will not change on this planet if we don't walk in our authority. 
Now look at this in Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. He says, And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. All right, now, let's just leave that up for a moment. Uh, the first thing I want you to realize is that our fight is not against flesh and blood. Our fight is against principalities, powers, wicked spirits in heavenly places, rulers of the darkness. We are fighting a spiritual fight that if you're not born again, you don't know how to fight. You, you can't depend on the unsaved world to handle the issues on the earth because if they're not born again, they have not yet been issued the authority to use the power. You see, it's God's power, but he's authorized us and given us permission to use that power. So it, it's important for you to understand this. We are, this is a spiritual battle. This is a spiritual fight. We are, we are not fighting, you know, just the physical virus of corona or the lack or the loss of jobs. We're not fighting that. We're fighting the, in the spiritual realm. We're fighting the fear. We're fighting the, the spiritual forces that are behind this coronavirus. We know how to engage in a spiritual fight. So the first thing you got to realize is that as a Christian, I am not powerless. As a Christian, notice what he says in verse 1, and when he had called unto his 12 disciples, he gave them power. Power was given even to the disciples, and, and they were not even born again. He gave them power. They, were, they, they believed in him. They followed him. They were committed to him, and Jesus gave them power. Well, those of you who are born again, the Bible says, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The day you got born again, the Holy Spirit came in your life and power came into your life. So you have power. You have power. Say out loud. Say, I have power. Say it again. I have power. It's so important that you recognize that you have power and you realize that you have power and you receive, I have power. So you're not powerless. If you are a born-again Christian, the Holy Spirit's on the inside of you. You have power. What is power? It's the ability to get the job done. It's the ability to obtain the victory. It's the ability to win the war. You have the ability and the power to get the job done. So if anything's going to change in this weird season where uh, this, this kind of a different kind of normal for people, if anything's going to change, it's going to be because we Christian people will stop being afraid recognize we have power, and then recognize we have authority to execute that power. Amen. So look what Jesus said here. He says he gave them power against unclean spirits. Huh. They're unclean spirits. They're spirits that are behind uh, sickness and disease and, 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 and spirits that are behind war and spirits that are behind viruses and infections and spirits that are behind pandemics and epidemics. And I'm saying to you, church, you have been given power to fight against and win. You have been given power over these spirits. You have power over this epidemic, this pandemic. You have power over the coronavirus. Wake up. You have power, praise God. And here Jesus gave them power against unclean spirits to do what? To cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. You have power, praise God. So I want you to get that. You have power. Say it again. I have power. All right, now, move on down. Uh, Move on down to verse 7 and 8. Now, now watch this. Jesus is still, still speaking. He says, and as you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leopards, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received and freely you give. Ladies and gentlemen, that's awesome. Because most of the stuff in this list, I talk to people about, and they don't think they can do it. 
They say, well, that was Jesus. I don't have that kind of power. And Jesus says, I gave you power. You have this kind of power. Power to do what? Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. You have that kind of a, that power. You have that kind of authority. Jesus supplied the power, and in this passage of Scripture, and the disciples made use of the power. The power has been supplied. It's time for us to use it. I say it's time for us to use it. And, and, and that's, that's the call today. That's the sermon today. It's time for us to use God's power. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Now, I know there's some of you, well, I just don't know about that, Brother Dollar. I'm telling you right now, if anything's going to change, it's because we are on our face. It's because we are declaring, we are using our power, we are speaking with the authorization that has been given to us by heaven. And when we do that, you're going to see some things change. We've got to commend. We've got to use the power. We've got, we got to stop talking to God about the problem and start talking to the problem about what God has already provided the, and, the, and the solution for the problem. We got to start talking to the problem. Corona, in the name of Jesus, that's the problem. You stop right now. I bind you right now. I bind that spirit that's behind you right now. Uh huh. Yeah. That's when things will start happening. Satan thinks, oh, he's just kind of enjoying it right now. He better enjoy it while he can, because as far as I'm concerned, it ends today. It ends today today. Look at Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. I'm going to read it out of the King James and then the New Living Translation. Luke chapter 10, verse 19, first out of the King James. Now, listen, this is going to be, this is, we're going to see clarity. Who really believes and who don't? I'm not talking denomination. I'm, I'm talking the Word of God, that if you believe the Word of God, and if you believe what He has said concerning us that we have been given power and that we have a right to command. We have a right to use his power to command things on this earth. You know, prayer, you have the authority to pray, but you know what prayer does when we do pray? It gives heaven consent to get involved. It gives heaven consent to get involved. We're not going to God and begging and, and praying like some little weakling. We're going to God and we're saying, heaven, you have a consent. That's what he meant. Whatever I bind on the earth, it's already bound in heaven. Heaven now has consent. Whatever I loose on the earth, it's already loosed in heaven. Heaven has consent. So therefore, I loose a healing over this earth. I loose a paralyzing effect against the coronavirus. You're paralyzed right now. I bind you in Jesus' name. Man, I tell you, that's powerful. And when we can start talking like that, instead of a bunch of little scared folks, oh, Lord Jesus, uh, stay back, stay back. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, you know, against that, but dear God, you, hadn't even, you haven't even released your authority, praise God. And you're opening your life up to fear and opening your house up to fear because you won't, you won't recognize who you are. Now, I, listen, I already know. I, I got some religious folks who just think that I done lost my mind. Well, I have. I lost my mind, and I got his mind now. Praise God. I don't, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not walking through this time with my mind. I'm going to have the mind of Christ and pay attention to what he has said about this thing. Amen. I'm telling you, listen, the world, they, they, they don't have an answer. They're searching every day, coming up with everything they, they think is right. But we do. We have an answer. And it's time for us to do it. It, ain't, it won't be the first time the church pulled the world out of it. It's time for us to get it done. It's time for, I'm calling for every born-again Christian who knows the power of prayer and their authority to get on it right now. And in Jesus' name, see this thing come to a close. Now look at Luke chapter 10, verse 19. He says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and you got power over all of the power of the enemy, oh, and nothing shall by in any means hurt you. How, how are you going to ignore that? Uh, look at this in the, uh, in the, in the NLT. You, you can't ignore this, man. These are, these are, this is the Word of God 
that we stand on, that we stand upon. Look what he says in verse 19. He says, look, I have given you authority. Say out loud, I have authority. Say it again, I have authority. He says, look, I have given you authority, the right to command. I've given you authority over all the power of the enemy. So whatever the enemy is doing in the earth, I have authority over all of his power. And he says, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them, and nothing will injure you. Nothing will injure you. I tell you, there's, there's no way I'm going to spend another day walking like I'm powerless. I have authority. I have authority over all of the power of the enemy. You say that out loud with me. Say, I have authority over all of the power of the enemy. Now, most Christians are starting from a position of powerlessness. Uh, they're saying things like, Lord, we are nothing. We can do nothing. We're just, we're just waiting on you, God. God, stretch forth your hand and heal, oh God. You know, they're pleading with God and, and they're begging with God to release his power, which is completely contrary to Jesus' command in Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 and 8. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out the devil. <laughs> Glory be to God. And I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, he said command. He didn't say go and plead and beg. Oh, God. Oh, there, boy, oh, God, we just a few of your little humble servants just asking you to stop by here just a little while. We know you're busy, but we need you to come, come, come. No, Jesus has already come, and he's given you the right to command, praise God. Well, oh, Lord, if, we, if you just stop by, stop by my house, God, and, and get rid of this virus, and stop by my house and get rid of this sickness, uh-uh. He's not your errand boy. He has given you the authority to stop by that house. If you don't do it, it ain't going to get done. Matthew 10, 7 and 8 says, heal the sick, raise the dead. He didn't tell us to pray and ask God to do it for us. He told us to do these things now. And I'm telling you right now, you speak to that coronavirus now. We are not doing it on our own. That's what I'm trying to get you to see, that when you do this, you're not doing it on your own because it's God's power that's working the miracle. It's God's power that's binding the virus. But we are the responsibility, or we have the responsibility for taking action. His power, but we have the responsibility to take action. Look at John, uh, I'm thinking of this, John 15 and 4. Glory be to God. I've gotten excited, and Lord Jesus, we have the power. I mean, this thing hit me yesterday morning. It's like, wait a minute, I got the power. Look at John 15, verse 5. Uh, let's, go, let's go to verse 4. Let's read verse 4 and 5. He says, abide in me, take up residence in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. A branch cannot bear fruit. By itself, there's got to be a root in order for the branch of an apple tree to give, bring forth apples. He, he said, except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. So I know it's not you, but it's, it's where you abide. It's where you take up residence, praise God. Now look at verse 5. He said, I'm the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the one that, that same will bring forth much fruit, for without me, you can do nothing. Now, that, that really brings some things to, 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 um, to a, a focus here. I am abiding in him. Are you abiding in him? He is abiding in me. Is he abiding in you? He says, now, if that's the case, if you have this relationship that Taff and I have been talking about this for a while, and if you're in it because you want God and you know him and he knows you and you're abiding in him and he's abiding in you, he says, that's got to happen because you can't do anything without me. And there are still people around the world that are trying to be like God without God. There's still people around the world that are trying to get things done, you know, on their, 
their own ability. And he says, this, you're the branch. You can't do it without me. And we're still trying to go do it without him. You, you see, the self-help books can't help you right now. The inspirational talks are not going to be able to help you right now. They'll make you feel better for a little bit. But if you want to get real results, it comes out of a relationship that you have with God. Because without him, you can do nothing. And I make this confession, I can't do nothing without him. I need him every second, every minute. I need him every hour. I need him every day. I got to have him. I will never sit in any place and declare that I can do this without God. No, I need him. I can't do nothing without him. That's the key. It's that intimate relationship with God that guarantees you the power to bring forth the fruit. And I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, man, I tell you, God, we need you. Lord, I, we can't do nothing without you. We don't need you just because of what's going on in our world today. We do. But, Lord, we, we needed you before corona hit. Hallelujah. I need you every day. And so because we know we have a personal, intimate relationship with God and we know we can't do anything without him, then you should have the confidence that when you release your authority on a thing, it shall surely come to pass. It shall be done. On my own, I can't heal nothing. On my own, I can't heal nothing. Well, the same thing's true with you. On your own, you can't heal nothing. Now, you might think you can, but you can't. And there's so many people that, that try to... They don't have a relationship with God, and they're so busy trying to build an image, and, 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 and they, they have an image with no power. They have an image with no results. Power is the ability to get results. And, 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 and I want results in my life. When I lay hands on the sick, they recover. When I cast out devils, the devil goes. Glory to God. And when I speak to mountains, the mountain moves. Praise God. That's, that's what you got to get on the inside of you. That confidence has got to be built up. I know for a fact that on my own, I can't heal nothing. But now here's what I thought about. I'm, I'm never on my own. <laughs> I'm never on my own. On my own, I can't do nothing, but I'm never on my own. Look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 in the Amplified Bible. Hebrews 13, 5 in the Amplified Bible. I'm never, I'm never on my own. I give God the praise. I'm never on my own. When, when, when tragedy strikes somewhere, I'm never on my own. When, when engines go off, I'm never on my own. When when I'm in a car crash, I'm never on my own. I, I'm never on my own. When, when a virus breaks loose, I'm never on my own. I'm not on my own. Hallelujah. Look what he says. He says, let your character or moral disposition be free from the love of money, including greed and avarice and lust and cravings for earthly possessions. Now watch this part. And be satisfied with your present circumstances and with what you have for... He, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down, nor relax my hold on you, assuredly not. Wow. He, he confirmed that in Joshua 1 and 5. I mean, God's committed to you. God's committed to you. He's committed to your safety. He's committed to your deliverance. He's committed to, 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 to never leave you nor forsake you. So you're, you're not going to be alone. You're not going to be alone. And I'm telling you right now, you're not alone. You're not alone. You may feel like it, but you're not alone. God is there. And since he's there, you develop that relationship with him, release your authority, and watch things change. Fear is not from God. The world offers plenty of opportunities to live in fear, but Christians must learn to completely cast out the emotion of fear. Today's offer, Victory Over Fear, is available for a love gift of 25 US dollars or more. This five message series will provide you with the tools to help you respond in faith to what Jesus has already done. Fear can't even touch you. Every time you think of it or hear a report, it's just the Holy Ghost will rise up on the inside of you and you will remind yourself of who I am. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. I said it and it is so. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm not moved by the reports. I'm moved by the Word of God. I'm moved by the Spirit of God. I'm moved by the Holy Ghost. I'm moved by the power of God. 
As an added bonus, we have combined today's offer with Creflo Dollar's life-changing book, Overcoming Fear. This combo is available to you for a love gift of 35 US dollars or more. Order this series to activate your faith and cast out fear today. Men, it's our time to dive deeper at the 2021 Mentality Men's Conference. Join us online on September 10th and 11th for two days of dynamic teachings from Creflo Dollar, raw and uncut. You're trying to live by a code that's no better than trying to live by the Abrahamic law. It's going to require you trusting in what you can do more than trusting in God. You can trade in the man code and you can take hold of this gospel of grace and you can live by the finished works of Jesus Christ. Don't miss out on this revival of manhood at the 2021 Mentality Conference. We got to give you the word of God. You got to learn some stuff. Wake yourself up and get this on the inside of you. You cannot live without Christ. You're about to receive real resolution in your life. So mark your calendars and register today. Simply text MENTALITY to 51555 or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. World Changers Church International and Creflo Dollar Ministries are committed to changing lives all over the world. Your generous gifts are helping us to do just that. For your added convenience, we want to invite you to join Change Express, our automatic giving service. You can give monthly and change lives by having your love gift deducted from your checking account or credit card on the same day every month. To sign up, log on to creflodollarministries.org right now. If you are looking for a church home and want to stay connected to Creflo Dollar Ministries, join us at a World Changers Fellowship Church in your area. For more information, visit us online at creflodollarministries.org. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.